Greetings and welcome. This is Rajiv Makhni on the Gadget 360 show and look at what a cool, insane, crazy show I have for you. The Asus ROG Strix Scar 15. Now this is an incredible looking laptop. I mean gaming, but look at what it has. Very good looking RGB illuminated laptop, amazing powerful internals, beautiful quad HD display, costs a lot, but you know, there's something like an oxymoron. It costs a lot, but I think it's still a bargain. Then the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 3. Great improvement over the Momentum Wireless 2. Amazing sound, great design, great battery life. Sennheiser really has hit the ball out of the park with this one. Then Compass Real Estate, one of the world's biggest real estate companies, comes to India as technology, AI, and reduces friction in property sales. And then the Red Dragon, Dragon Bond K630. Sounds like something out of Game of Thrones, right? But this is the budget compact gaming keyboard. Comes with tactile switches, feels great. RGB effects all throughout, and the keyboard actually functions and looks absolutely fantastic. That and a whole lot more happening on the show this week. Sony has announced a new product in its Link Buds lineup called the Link Buds S. While they are priced reasonably at almost $200, they offer a good long list of features. Active noise cancellation, natural transparency mode, and support for the high-res LDAC codec. They are supposed to be extremely lightweight so the user can always have them in their ears without ever being bothered by them. The expected battery life is 20 hours combined with the case. Launch details and prices in India are not known for now. Sony announced that current gen games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Demon's Souls, Ghost of Tsushima's Director's Cut NBA 2K22 and some others will be available with their new restructured PlayStation Plus subscription. Classic games like Ape Escape, Super Stardust Portable, Siphon Filter and Tekken 2 will also be coming with an upgraded user experience. Access to games will be based on the tier that has been subscribed to. Our top story is a laptop that is also a bit of a contradiction. It costs a lot, but I'm saying it's worth it. In fact, I think it's great bang for buck. This is the Asus ROG Strix SCAR 15. You know, this really embraces that whole gamer aesthetic. It's loud. But it's really good looking, RGB lights everywhere, really good keyboard, massive trackpad, a really good display. Amazing quad HD IPS display, 240Hz refresh rate, very thin little bezels around, no webcam which is quite a risk at this point, absolutely incredible set of internals. Just look at the kind of internals it has, this is absolutely and totally specced out. It's priced at 2,64,990 and I know what you're saying, that's very expensive, believe me, it's a bargain. Asus's Republic of Gamers, ROG for short, has been about getting all of the key decisions right to make the laptops fit the needs of any gamer. These key decisions come in the areas like display, response time, internals and thermal design. Wrapping it all up is the price which will either make it worth it or a bargain for what the laptop is capable of. And with the ROG SCAR Strix 15, there is a strong sense of those key decisions being right. And through this review, we will answer all of the hows and the whys in the next few minutes. Let's start with what we can look at. The laptop heavily embraces the family name. While it is thick at 2.7cm and heavy at 2.3kg, the entire chassis is illuminated by RGB. In every nook and corner, it might look good. The lid is made of metal on the top and everything under it is plastic which is solid. Once the lid is open, the RGB lit keyboard greets you with the base divided into opaque and translucent plastic which might look different to some and grey to the others. The keyboard itself is springy and responsive and feels good to type on. It is not the most comfortable keyboard but it is just a few ways away. The trackpad under it has a great size and smooth response with some effort needed to register a click. The ports are plenty and located in good spots. Two USB-A ports on the left side, two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI 2.1 port, an Ethernet port and an audio jack on the back. Good looks are followed through on the display as well. The bezels are as narrow as they can be which is also supported by the fact that there is no webcam at the top. The panel itself is a Quad HD IPS one with a 240Hz refresh rate. The colors look good with brightness perfect for indoor use. Watching content or playing games share the same great immersive experience with a 15.6 inch size. And the speakers that add the A to the AVs sound great. They are not the best of the best but offer a good enough experience. 
but what is definitely much higher than good enough is the performance. The laptop comes with the Intel i9-12900H 14 core CPU, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Ti GPU, 32 GB of fast DDR5 RAM and 2 TB PCIe Gen 4 SSD. These internals work together to make performance blazing fast. Average tasks are not even worth talking about because you will blast past them at incredible speeds given the next gen RAM and SSD on the laptop. The CPU and GPU make power hungry tasks pretty easy to perform. Gaming is an absolute charm on this laptop. With the settings maxed out while at 1440p resolution, all games manage well over 60 to 70 FPS. And to remove the minute subtlety left after the consistent and bright RGB show, the fans at full speed get loud, but not enough to disturb your experience in any way. Even so, the thermal design works well to keep overheating far from the bay and the laptop remains cool throughout. What will not impress anyone as expected is the battery life. 6 hours with average use and 1 hour 30 minutes with heavy use is what one can get. So keep the charger handy at all times. Not that you would want to carry the 2.3 kg laptop in your everyday bag. Despite that, the strict Scar 15 has gotten all of what a gamer would want right. The key decisions have been spot on which translates to a great experience when it comes to playing the AAA games that one wants to dominate. And hence, for the price of 2,64,990, with those internals, display, design and power, it is not only worth it, but even feels like a bargain. Hence, if this is the money you want to spend, it will be well spent on the ROG Strix Scar 15. Up next is Sennheiser, the Momentum True Wireless 3, third generation of a great set of TWS earbuds. But this is a big improvement over the previous generation. Much better looking, subtle design, but still very sophisticated. Comes with wing tips for a much better fit. Users can perform multiple functions through the different gestures on the earbuds. But you know, eventually, what does it come down to? The sound, and Sennheiser really gets audio. Sound produced by the seven nanometer drivers was very well balanced, nice warmth, punch to it. The noise cancellation is great. It's not the kind that absolutely blows you down, but it's very, very good. The mics perform very well for the calls that we made on them and combined battery life about 22 to 23 hours. One of the best things to see while reviewing tech is when one product improves massively over its previous iteration. And the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 3 earbuds often reminded us of this fact throughout our usage. Now, whether that improvement over its predecessor translates to it being an easily recommendable product is the question of the day that we are here to answer. Simply from looking at them, while the case has some minor improvements, the earbuds themselves have had some big upgrades in aesthetics. They are smaller and lighter. They feel great in terms of build and the subtle and dark finish charmed us. The case itself has been reduced in height, width and length but still could use some cuts in length as you will be able to feel it very well in your pockets. It still comes with a great tweed fabric finish all around. While there are four options in ear tips, the MTW3s also come with wingtips in the box to make the fit extra secure in your ears. And they also come with all the right seals in place to be resistant to sweat or mild rain. The outer surface of both earbuds is touch sensitive for gestures. The number of functions one can perform through the earbuds is the most impressive on these earbuds. The single, double and triple taps along with tapping and holding all serve different purposes on both earbuds. They can be configured or disabled through the Sennheiser smart control app. The app can also be used to mess with the basic equalizer setting and set different sound profiles for different locations. While these features are expected, we would have loved to see Google Fast Pair on these earbuds, which are still missing. By default, without messing with the equalizer, the 7 nanometer drivers on the earbuds create sound that is simply put amazing. All frequencies are given equal attention. The bass is rumbly but at the same time very clear with all the low-end details. The mids are clear as day with plenty of warmth and separation. The treble does not overwhelm at any volume and stays easy and sharp at all times. To back that sound is active noise cancellation for the times the user needs an escape from the noise around them. While the ANC is good, it is still a few ways from the best possible noise cancellation on TWS. It cancels out most of the low-end frequencies, 
but the mid and high level frequencies tend to find their way to the ears. Playing music wipes them out but it still is not capable of creating a bubble one can expect from the best TWS in this price range. As for using the MTW3s on a windy day, the noise cancellation can get easily disturbed as we heard consistent wind noise in our testing. For calls, the mics are just fine. The voice goes through clearly at low noise levels, but any high frequency sound around the user can mask their voice out on the call. And through all the calls and music, the earbuds will last for about 5.5 hours and the case can charge them 3 times which translates to 22 hours of combined battery life. So easy to say the Momentum True Wireless 3 earbuds have improved in every aspect from their previous iteration. And based on these improvements, they have become more recommendable. So if the design, the fit, size and sound are what you prefer, these will be an easy recommendation at the price of 21,990 rupees. And now we are talking about a particular category which doesn't use much technology but Compass is a real estate company. It's one of the world's fastest growing real estate companies that has completely changed the game. It generated about $1.4 billion in revenue in the first quarter of 2022 alone. And now it's set up its India operations here in Hyderabad and Gurgaon. Now entering the Indian real estate space and looking to change the way things are done here, you know, we're still, I think, very traditional old school out here. But this is a whole new level. Very limited human interaction. Everything happens with AI, with technology. Lots of very interesting things. The process that they use and how they actually get the buyer and the seller together is quite incredible. So I'll show you a little bit about what Compass does. In an industry which still seems to be getting to grips with an infusion of technology, Compass has strongly established itself as the first mover. It is building the first modern real estate technology platform with the sole aim of merging the top talent with technology to make the process of searching, selling or buying property easier for every user. And the success of this approach is not an estimation, it is a reality. After an amazingly successful 2021 with $6.4 billion in revenue and a 73% year-on-year growth, Compass established its first and only overseas development centre in Hyderabad in India, which has been followed by another one in Bengaluru and now in Gurugram. Compass is counting on the talent pool that they are forming in India to merge it with technology, machine learning and artificial intelligence to create amazing new products which will help in reducing the friction and time consumed in the real estate business in India. The Indian Development Centre is going to be working in conjunction with Compass's American hubs based in New York, Seattle and Washington DC. The real estate segment in India remains far away from the grip of technology and Compass is looking to change that with better consumer relationship management, marketing, client servicing, 3D virtual tours, determining a property's likeliness to be put on the market and multiple other services which will change the way things work right from the core. Their success has been massive, their future looks immense and India seems to be their next huge step towards changing the world of real estate and just how the business has been looked at so far. Now let's go and talk to Robert Refkin, the founder and CEO of Compass and Joseph Siroche, Chief Technology Officer of Compass to find out a little bit more about the company and their India plans. Gentlemen, welcome to the show and congratulations. Very happy to have both of you here in India. Now, Compass has had a fascinating story. The company has grown exponentially in real estate using technology and innovation as a background. And it's taken very few years to reach such large numbers. Can you give me a brief synopsis of what you do in Compass and how are you different from other real estate companies? Yes, yeah, so Compass was founded just a little less than 10 years ago with a founding team of less than 10 people. And we're now the number one real estate brokerage in the United States. There are over 30,000 people in the Compass community, uh, and we serve hundreds of thousands of transactions a year. Uh, we're in over 400 cities in the United States. We do intend to go international in the years to come. And we're very proud to be here in India as our, our international development center. Rajiv, now we are in the decade of the platform. Platforms empower communities in ways that couldn't be done before. It's all in the cloud. It is using mobile. It is taking collaboration among service providers to a new level. It's enabling people to work together 
in a way that was never before possible as large communities. And that empowerment gives leverage. That's how we are able to grow faster. We are able to bring communities of agents to serve buyers and sellers much, much uh, more rapidly by recruiting them into a platform, empowering them with cloud, with AI, with mobile applications to serve their clients incredibly well through a pure digital experience. You know, here, the real estate market in India is quite old school. We still like that one-to-one -one interaction and everything else, that person-to-person -person effect. What do you think are the aspects that the Indian real estate market can learn from Compass in terms of leveraging technology to better the consumer experience? Yeah, the, the strategy of Compass is to replace today's overly complex, very paper-driven, antiquated workflow with a seamless, all-digital, end-to-end platform that empowers every real estate professional to accomplish more. Okay, now let's talk about the product innovation taking place at Compass right now. Yes, uh, so think about how an agent will find a property to sell. In the past, they used to knock on doors. Well, today AI can predict which properties are likely to come on the market. So the agent can now have a very personalized reach out to that particular client and help them market their home in the best possible way using digital tools and create an experience that is fantastic for the seller and for the buyer at the same time. That's just one small example using AI. Well, we have many more. We have a mobile app. Every interaction is digital. You said many of these interactions were person to person, mm -hmm. old economy. And now, the mobile app enables you to see collections of homes that you would like to visit. It enables you to schedule your open house. It enables you to have constant interaction with your agent to get advice on how to buy homes. You search for properties. You get a pricing on properties. Everything is integrated in one experience in the palm of your hand. Thank you so much, both of you. And I look forward to you expanding your operations even more here in India. Let's take a quick break right now on the Gadget 360 show and we come back lots more. Let's move on now to an excellent gaming keyboard by Red Dragon. 61 key layout comes with only wired output, but very, very low latency because of that. Tactile switches on the keyboard feels very great to use, all mechanical feel out there, extremely fast with response. There's a little bit of wobble because it's a small little thing and there is rattle in the keys. But since the keyboard also has a higher profile, it can result in aching wrists at first. You've got to use the wrist rest if you're one of those people that games for a very, very long time. Here's our review. Budget products can come anywhere between hitting it out of the park or retiring from the game even before it starts. And today, our job is to tell you where, in this case, the Red Dragon Dragonborn K630 lies. While we tell you about it in the next few minutes, just do not let the grandeur of the name result in any misgivings. This keyboard is tiny. It goes for the 60% layout, which means that there are just 61 keys, with the individual navigation keys, number pad and arrow keys removed. It is meant to be used primarily by gamers. Even though tiny, it is still solid. The build may entirely consist of plastic, but the keys themselves are pleasant to the touch. The keys have a texture which is easily felt when you type. What might annoy the user is how the larger keys tend to wobble, which may feel flimsy. And yes, as is the case with all mechanical keyboards, the keys are hot swappable with the accessories right inside the box. What is not inside the box though, is a wrist rest, which was important. Since the keyboard is a high profile one, unless the user gets into the habit of it, the wrist will fatigue while typing. The feet on the front edge of the keyboard can be adjusted to tackle the wrist fatigue, but that's the only help available. Once the user adjusts to the high profile, the typing experience ends up being pleasant. The brown switches are extremely responsive and tactile. The feedback is satisfying, fast and comfortable. But where the keyboard proves its low price is latency, as based on our experience, we will not be able to recommend it for professional gaming. But for casual users, it is perfectly usable. And if you're looking for wireless use, skip this keyboard then do, as the only way to use the keyboard is through a wire. What shines through the most, literally, is the RGB. 
All of the keys are individually lit, hence certain animations can look good while throbbing throughout the layout. This animation can be customized in Red Dragon software. The software also just works on Windows, so the RGB lit Dragonborn stays away from the subtleties of the Max. What the Red Dragon Dragonborn K630 does not stay away from is a good price. All of the good and bad aspects come in at a price of 2890 rupees, which makes the bad aspects pretty forgivable. It is still not a hit out of the park, but it gets close. Hence, if you've been looking for a small mechanical keyboard for casual gaming and everyday use, you won't go wrong with the Dragonborn K630. Hence, get it. That then is the Gadget 360 show for this week, but we've got a great amount of stuff coming up next week. Do join me on the show then.